Welcome back to your home for everything local sports. It's JJ and Mike and Tyler and the CIF State Track video is brought to you by the fine folks at Naples Rip Company and all of our track coverage is sponsored by Bryson Financial. Last dance, last chance for greatness for track and field here in the state of California. 2023 at Buchanan High School in Clovis, which is basically Fresno. A great meet at a great facility that's run extremely well, but the he will rock you. Doesn't mean the meet will start late. You first have to find shade in the meantime. Look at these parents. They've been here before. They know what they're doing, JJ. Plenty of room to move about the cabin. Athletes Village. Also, championship level shade finding, as JJ said. You will find the LBC in the cuts. Wilson, Polly, Jordan, Lakewood, they're all here. They all know where the shade is. And some of these teams have been locking down these same spots for decades. Love seeing Polly and Jordan with the mini Atlantic Avenue up here in Clovis. Yeah, that's uh, Atlantic Avenue North here in Cow Country. As, uh, they get ready here and then they make a run at greatness over there as they go down through the chute and uh, out onto the track. Um, always going to be the girls four by one relay to start this meet out as we've got three schools, Wilson, Polly and Lakewood. For Wilson, it's Taryn Maroney, Ajene Lucky, Kaylin Edwards, and Lauren Webster. For Polly, Iris Portley, uh, Kennedy Reed, Ariana Smith, and Jalen Hunter. Lakewood's Jaya Jones, Amaya Rice, N uh, Nalia Davis, and Brooklyn Lee. Pretty special to have three teams from the same league kicking off the final nine in California. You're not gonna see that very often. And a very special day for Lakewood as well. I mean, this is not the type of group you usually see here from the Lancers at this meet. No, they set a school record in the prelims and then go ahead and as you see, running very well. Wilson up there in third as they're coming down to the anchor leg. The Bruins are gonna push ahead into third and Lakewood fourth with a 46-81. Polly uh, trailing back there in eighth, but Wilson will take third in 46-66. And as they are in the team title hunt, those points a very valuable way to start the day for the girls in gold. Boys, four by 100 relay up next. And again, the track rabbit stealing the show. Yeah, Javon Hampton's gonna start it off and then go past the baton to the freshman Malachi Dawson, who really had a standout day in the relays for the Jackrabbits. Um, obviously this is always a very fun and fast race as Dawson's gonna come down the backstretch excited what he will do in his career. Gonna hand to Zy Ricks and uh, Ricks always gonna be fun to watch on the curve, setting it up to a really fun anchor uh, for Khalif Johnson. Uh, very unique to have uh, one of the best 800 runners in the country on your 4x1 with Zy Ricks, but Khalif Johnson, a great anchor leg, is going to push the Jackrabbits across in fourth as Granada Hills, the state favorites, win that one. Bet the field will have some Long Beach representation as well, Mike. You're going to start with Polly's Jill Wetland, the sophomore. She's been a standout in the high jump. She was the CIF champion last year as a freshman, and she is going to take fifth place in state at five foot six. And she was the second best of the underclassmen. Girls 400, Wilson senior Ajene Lucky gets her absolutely massive day started, Tyler. I mean, this kid was incredible. Yeah, forks up for the future Sun Devil Ajene Lucky. I mean, so much fun to watch her run. The only concern for her today was how much she was running, because obviously she was going to put some mileage on those legs, but she really came through for the Bruins, as you'll see as we go through in this video. And uh, this was the one we knew, right? This is her race where we were comfortable. She's in the middle of the track for a reason, and she is going to keep it that way as she comes across and would eventually win this one, finishing first in a time of 50. 326, picking up 10 big points for the Bruin girls. It usually takes somewhere between 30 and 40 points to win a team state championship. So when you can bang 10 of them out in one event, you know that you're doing something right. That is a huge, huge performance by Lucky with a 5326. Yeah, she's tired, but she's still all smiles. As we go to the boys 400, where Polly's star junior Zai Ricks getting any rest he can between the four by one relay and this race, and it would pay off. We knew this was gonna be an exciting race with Dijon Stanley from Granada Hills, and it certainly did not disappoint as these two were absolutely putting on a show. Yeah, that poly gold isn't quite mustard, but it was right next to Dijon. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it's pretty close. The yellow stuff, Jerry. The yellow. <laughs> 
but Rick's obviously, you know, a, a nationally elite runner in the 800 and a guy that he can only run in so many events, you know what I mean? And he ran a lot on this track today. Um, and, you know, certainly any race you put him in, he's going to be a contender near the top. And in this one, he would take second, 46.06, as you see him coming right there in the finish in the middle of the track. We go back to the field and a wild story for Wilson sophomore Lauren Webster. Yeah, how about this day? She does f uh, four of her six jumps. Uh, she had to pass some. She finishes uh, third with a 19.10.5. She had to pass some jumps because she ran over to compete in the four by one with Wilson. Then on her last jump, she gets injured, has to go to the hospital to get a CT scan, and then comes back for a celebration you may see more of at the end of this video. Unbelievable. Also a great story, Team Gabe. Uh, our guy Gabe Tyler, we've known uh, literally since he was in elementary school, the younger sibling of Ariana Washington, the six-time poly individual state champ and Olympian. Uh, and she did make the trip uh, to see him run today, which was pretty special and awesome. Glad we got to be there to witness that. Gabe Tyler competing in four events in the paraambulatory class for the Jackrabbits. He ran in the one, the two, the four, and competed in the shot put finished in fourth, fifth, and sixth place in those events. Gabe was born with cerebral palsy, has had several surgeries on his leg just to allow him to walk, much less run. This has been his dream to get to compete at the state meet and score points for Polly. As it is for all these paraambulatory athletes, this is such a great addition to the state meet over the last few years. And it's really cool to see more and more athletes competing in these events. Uh, obviously, we've got the personal connection with Gabe, but very happy to see all these guys out here competing. And these events scored this year at the CIF state meet for the first time. So great job at the CIF for trying to be as inclusionary as possible of all these awesome athletes. Oh, it got a little dusty out there. I'll be honest with you. We moved to the marquee event, Boys 100 Jordan Washington from Jordan back after finishing second to that guy, Roderick Pleasant. J-Town faithful in the front row to watch their boy, Jay Wash, who had a great year, let's be honest. Another great year, absolutely, and uh, we knew this was a marquee event that we were excited to see as the gun goes off, and here they come. That man with the S on his chest is going to win it. Pleasant in 10:20, but Washington takes second for J-Town in 10:30. Always fun to see those guys battle, and great to see J-Dub up there getting a the medal. We mentioned this meet very well run. If you forgot something, they got you. They will lace your spikes up. Great merch available at this thing. So shouts to everybody involved for the setup. We go to the boys 800. Wilson's Marcel Francis Mitchell. Kind of got caught in the best worst position in this one because he's on the rail. That's not really where you want to be though. Yeah, he was like us coming up to this meet. Kind of just stuck in traffic a little bit, um, but at least he didn't fall flat on his face um, at the end as uh, he's going to take ninth in this one, 154.36. Get ready for the LBC to put on an absolute show in the 300 hurdles, Mike. If you're title watching for Wilson, this was going to be a big one because they do have two in this event with Manaya Tidwell and Kaylin Edwards. Uh, Edwards in lane six. You want to keep an eye on her. She's a sophomore. She's really proven herself to be a reliable, dependable athlete for the Bruins this year. And she knew that she needed to come out and put the hammer down in this race. She had that kind of eye of the tiger look before it got started. And she absolutely runs away with this thing. You see the strength and the confidence. This is a difficult, I, for my money, the hardest event. Sprinting almost a quarter of a mile while also jumping over the hurdles. And she's going to win it in 41.57, Tidwell takes sixth in 43.15. That is a huge collection of team points and really puts the Bruins in the driver's seat for that team title. Oh, the roar from the Bruin faithful told you as much. They knew how big those points were and they let people know about it. Love to see the LBC on top of the podium. And it would happen again. It's the boys' turn. The 300 hurdles allow us to introduce the entire world to Jordan's Daryl Stevens. Yeah, and this is, we talk about it kind of every time we do these videos, this is such a grueling race. And um, it's it's really a, a flex, honestly, for Long Beach to come and sweep these races. So um, got to shout that out. Um, Stevens had the run of his life in this one. He had the fastest qualifying time in prelims, even though I wouldn't necessarily consider him a favorite. He didn't win CIF. Right. But um, you just got to peak at the right time. And this was definitely a noisy race, but he made it happen. And guys, this finish is the closest finish in this event in CIF state history. We're talking thousands of a second, but Stevens is gonna win it 37-44, but it's 432, 435, and 437 for the top spot, and he is on the right side of history. 
Congrats, J-Town, and congrats, Daryl Stevens. You had just enough to win it, and here comes Jordan head coach Sherrod Moore, already emotional before he gets to trackside. From the top rope, so <laughs> proud you got to crown him. What a special moment, and shouts to Tyler. What a phenomenal video clip that is, bud. Well, way to go. That's uh, that's uh, put it in the photo book type stuff right there. Look how happy this kid is. Look at how happy this kid is. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, you would never say, we've never covered a kid where it was like it got old to win a state title, but I can't remember a kid enjoying it more than Daryl Stevens did. Back to the field and Polly's by Ricks in the shot put. Opened up with a great throw, and that was actually the throw that counted. Absolutely. Sometimes you just start with your best. You know, she ended up third overall, a 42, eight and a quarter. So shout out to the Ricks family, Mai and Zai, for both showing out, and they will both be returning for the Jackrabbits next year. Back to Ajane Lucky from Wilson in the girls' 200. She has been tested physically and mentally all day, you guys, and she just never stopped fighting. No, this was definitely a spot where you could see the fatigue as she's sort of fighting to finish seventh here in 2409. That's an important two points in the team race, but you do start to wonder, does Lucky have enough in the tank to even tow the line in the four by four because you could just see she was gassed. Jordan Washington also back on the track in the boys 200. The junior just using his pure athleticism in this race because his body really isn't built for it, but ask this kid to go fast and he will go fast. He will go fast and take fourth in 2106, but uh, we're all living in Pleasantville in this race as uh, our guy from Sarah wins the double in the one and the two. One last title for Black Superman as he exits the high school ranks. A special career for Pleasant as well. And we'll miss Turn Washington. Turn on the lights! <laughs> Just in time, JJ, that massive humanity can navigate the traffic of some history. Difficult to make history at the state meet, but not when you're adding a new event, because obviously then it's historic no matter what happens. This is the first ever 4x800. There'd been some debate for a long time about are we going to get a 4x8? Are we going to get a, distant, uh, a distance medley? They go with the four by eight and obviously Long Beach very glad they do because Polly and Wilson have been atop the leaderboards in this event really for the entirety of the year and sure enough this was a really exciting race that featured those two Long Beach schools. Uh, Rick's in the mix yet again. Yeah and, and honestly everybody on this relay eight they, they all had to run 800 you know what I'm uh, saying but yeah uh, Rick's, Rick's the first ever to run in three relays at the state meet so that's pretty cool as <laughs> the Jackrabbits handle business there uh, and this is a grueling one in the 3200 Milliken's Jason Para the junior has uh, been the best cross country runner in the LBC and uh, he ran a phenomenal race tonight going up against Highlands Matt Donis the uh, senior as those two were just right at the top the entire race yeah you can see Donis checking and Para never let him get away even though they were both separating from the pack. You know, Jason Parra was the first athlete that we interviewed after COVID. It was a cross country race on campus at Milliken because he couldn't go to the parks. And he was just the baby freshman coming out of nowhere, winning this race as they get to the bell lap here. Look at this kid just being an absolute man out there. Now he doesn't win it, but this is the 3200 guys. If you survive it, it's kind of a thing. You know what I mean? And to have him come after this race and talk to us about the struggles that he went through this year and on the day of the race and all of that stuff and how just battling through life and getting to this race is what it was all about. Again, Tyler, incredible work from you on the camera. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the story's right in front of you. <laughs> he takes second place there, uh, up from his sixth place finish last season. Last races of the night, the girls 4x400, four and this is just a victory lap for Wilson. They've already locked up the team scoring. Impressive to know that going into the last race, where you can say, hey, we don't even have to worry. We're just having fun out here trying to drop time. Yeah, that's when you know that you really were the class of California, and the girls in gold certainly proved that today. Manaya Tidwell, Kaylin Edwards, Ajane Lucky, and Ishkadet Tirado basically just taking a bow over the course of a sprinted mile here because everyone already knew it was announced. They won this thing. But look at Ajane Lucky. Uh, up all night to stay lucky, dude. <laughs> shot out of a cannon, as we said. She'd run so much over the last couple days and over the last month. You just didn't know what she was going to have in the tank. And what she did was she ran the second best split of anyone in this field. Uh, Toronto would also run a very nice split. But Culver City's anchor leg, uh, pretty tough with a 52-11. That was the best split anyone ran all night. Well, the Bruins are going to have to get comfortable on that podium because uh, they're gonna be there in just a second after that penultimate race. Then we go to the finale. Boys, four by four, ends the state meet as always. And this is just track rabbit territory, guys. 
Yeah, and, and it's a young group here. Okay, I just want to emphasize that as freshman Noah Smith is going to start it off for Polly. Then it's going to be Khalif Johnson, and then another freshman in Malachi Dawson, and then finally Zy Ricks. We mentioned he was on three relays. This is the last one he's going to be on. But all of these guys coming back for the Jackrabbits. Got to shout out the freshman Dawson though. His leg was special. Man. Well, this was this was the way that he fought back from losing this. This is a guy who's run 100s uh, at an elite level for you know since he was at the youth uh, tier, and then his been a 100 200 guy this year fighting in the 400 and holding him off then obviously you give the stick to zy ricks and you feel pretty good about what's going to happen from that point on he is going to anchor polly home to a 312 99 championship state gold medal for that 4x4 squad and as we said they are all underclassmen they will all be back Lots of young talent in the LBC at several different schools. Very excited to see him back next year. But the team that gave you the What Up Long Beach at the beginning of this video is lifting the state plaque yet again. Yeah, and a little bit of history for the uh, Wilson Bruins. This is their fifth state championship in school history. Uh, all of them have been for track and field, the fourth for the Wilson girls, and the first state championship for the Wilson girls since 2006. Shout out to the Bruins. Special stuff from Wilson, special stuff from all these Long Beach athletes. So happy that thanks to your support, the readers of the 562, all three of us could be up here in Fresno to cover what truly was a magical day to help close out the 22-23 school year. Make sure you get to the 562.org right now smash that subscribe button to make sure that we can be here again next year giving long beach sports and its athletes the coverage they deserve